Welcome to Channel 7 News. Today we will be talking about the new piece of technology that has been added during World War I. During the war, America saw a lot of new pieces of technology and some of these even include new guns. Some of these new pieces of technology include the M1A1 Thompson and the M1917 Browning submachine gun. Without these weapons, the likeliness of the war ending the way it did changes quite a bit. Now over to Kingsley for more information. As you said earlier, one of the big time used guns in World War I is the Browning M1917. It shot a 30 out 6 Springfield round, which traveled at 2,800 feet per second. The overall length was 38.5 inches and weighed a total of 55 pounds. It could shoot 600 rounds per minute, then the bullets could travel 6,560 feet. That is more than a mile. That is really far for a bullet, as few ever shot guns. That makes a really dangerous gun, but in my opinion, any gun is dangerous, but when you have a gun that's shooting a 30 out 6 round, 600 bullets per minute, and can shoot over a mile away, that has deadly, deadly written all over it. Now over to Sydney on the M1A1 Thompson. I was agreed that the Browning was a deadly machine gun also. It's a scary thought that the bullet could go farther than a mile. Now over to the M1A1 Thompson. The M1A1 Thompson is a 45 caliber automatic weapon designed to be fired from the shoulder or hip. It's a machine gun that is portable automatic firearm. The submachine gun began life in 1919 following the World War I. It was the creation of General John Talaferro Thompson, who started work early as 1917. The initial year of the service was in 1938. The overall length of the M1 Thompson was 813 milliliters. The weight when it's empty is 10.58 pounds. Now over to our field reporter, Linda. Thank you, Cindy. Here I am today at a museum that has weaponry that was used in World War I. Our analysts, Kingsley and Cindy, have just gotten done talking about the Browning and the Thompson, which are placed in the case behind me. Today we will be talking with the owner of the museum, George F. Ware, to give us a little bit more insight on just how war was. So thank you for being here today, no George. First, at some points you had some times when you had free time in between battles, and in the winter time you didn't go outside very often because it was mm -hmm. probably pretty cold. So what did you do at those times? Firstly, thanks for having me here today, Linda. And to answer your question, we would get stuck inside, sadly. But other than that, we'd scrub floors, wash windows, clean lanterns, just doing hundreds of jobs. It was such a boring time. Many of us were anxious to get back into battle. That sounds so weird, but I'm sorry. It was true. So, when you went into battle, do you become worried? Were you scared at all? Oddly, I felt excited. I mean, I was just a young man at the time. At first, I was like many others, afraid of being afraid. But soon, I got over that. I then started to feel the excitement and thrill of battle. It was kind of scary having this new technology, like the Browning and the M1A1 Thompson, into the war because we knew it, that it was stronger and deadlier. But I was still anxious to go into war. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your service, George. No now back to the studio with Tony. That'll be all for today, but welcome to the new year and a new chance for some new hope. With any questions, be sure to mail us at 1137 Jefferson Avenue. Thank you and have a wonderful day.